management is doing things right, but leadership is doing the right things. And I think in PR, as much or more than any other profession, that's something we always need to keep in mind. This is not a business that's about wordsmithing or spin control or, or other things. It's about leadership in, in uh, the right kinds of behavior, the leadership in the right kinds of, uh, of engagement with various uh, uh, parts of our, uh, of our constituency. And, and leadership is really, I think more than anything, about more than great performance yourself, it's about bringing out great performance in everyone around you. When I look at great leaders in history and great leaders in our business, they are people who follow the advice of uh, Abraham Lincoln, who said that towering genius disdains the beaten path. So they're always looking for new paths and, uh, and how they can help others uh, get on those paths and succeed. Uh, having the, the core values that, that really are, are exemplified in, in the page principles and some other leadership mantras in our business. Be honest, be forthright, uh, be um, engaging with your stakeholders. And I think especially understanding what uh, the full dimensions of communications really are. It's not just about how we frame things uh, to say them the right way. It's great listening and understanding of the full dimensions of the mission of whatever our, whatever our organization is, whether it's a company, uh, a, a, an educational institution, a nonprofit organization, a government agency. What is that mission? What are the, what are the values of that organization? And how can we best exemplify them in both words and deeds? First of all, I started out as a newspaper reporter, and whether you start as a reporter or in any other field, I think some of those principles that make a good newspaper reporter, strong writing, not just that you write well, but that you care about writing. I wish I saw among some of the uh, emerging talents in our business, and what I try to stimulate is more discussion just about what makes for elegant writing, and what, what does that mean? And, and first of all, it requires uh, being very inquisitive, uh, doing a lot of reading yourself, and recognizing who the most successful people are in our business, and and ask either ask through um, through research that you do, or ask them directly uh, what what matters most to them, and how the and what what paths they followed in their uh, career development. Perhaps the most important for me, and I think it's something that everybody goes through in their development as as a leader is that ability to trust that others can do things as well as you can or maybe even better uh, and to uh, recognize that the great maestros in history in many cases were uh, were outstanding musicians themselves uh, so Leonard Bernstein was a great pianist and uh, Mitslav Rostropovich from the National Symphony Orchestra was a great cellist but what made them great conductors and great uh, maestros was not their own personal musical virtuosity. It was what they brought out of the rest of that orchestra, how they channeled the creativity and, and vision of the uh, composer, and then the, the way they communicated and, and with, with both the musicians and with the audience and made for uh, a transcendent experience. And I think in everyday business and, in, and in, certainly in public relations, that ability to recognize not only you know what things uh, will will make the difference between success or failure but also inspiring and motivating and and uh, demonstrating the, those behaviors and principles for those that you really need to count on to deliver that wonderful symphony probably the person that uh, a lot of us in the profession have benefited from and, and uh, been inspired by in recent years is John Awada of IBM, uh, who not only is uh, an incredibly accomplished professional himself and, uh, and, and, and became not only the CCO but also then eventually CMO of IBM. In the spirit of leadership, uh, he's, he's helped all of us to really think about what the role of the chief communications officer in an organization is and how companies should and can aspire to be more when it comes to, uh, 
to their uh, engagement with stakeholders. And really, how all of the changes that have come about because of the digital age and, and otherwise have, have changed maybe some of the, um, uh, even if they haven't changed the fundamental principles, they've changed a lot of how we operate day to day, and I think he's been an inspiration to all of us. For me, uh, it would be impossible to say that, to answer that question without pointing to somebody who's a great historical figure but also happens to still have the office next to mine in my New York office, uh, and that's Harold Burson, who at 94 years old still comes to work every day and still sets an example for all of us. Uh, and I think what makes great leaders in this business that, that ability to see beyond the obvious and, and continually ask the, both the pertinent and impertinent questions that sometimes you need to be asked in, in different situations. His non, uh, unending inquisitiveness, he still seeks out mentors uh, he, to teach him about the uh, social media and about other new developments that are happening today. Um, but also through the years, he's, he's been incredibly generous in, in how he's uh, uh, shared his insights and experience uh, with others. And when, when you work with Harold, it's always very obvious that he's not sitting there trying to make himself look like the most uh, important person in the room or the smartest person in the room. He's asking those questions that can help everybody in the room to think about things in a different way and maybe uh, uh, come on those solutions themselves. And uh, so for me, it's Harold Burson. While they're implemented in different ways, I think the, the, the principles of leadership, and I, I, think they're, I think they're the same in every field. It's like asking if, if uh, one should drive your car differently in uh, this street versus that street. There, there are gonna be things you'll encounter on one street that won't be on another, but what really makes successful leaders is gonna be similar, and those are that ability to understand what's the right thing to do, to, uh, to uh, not only uh, suss that out yourself, but be, ha be, be really a strong multiplier effect for everybody around you so that you're bringing out um, the, the best of everyone around you and being um, forthright with your feedback. Um, so in other words, giving strong direction, but also uh, helping everybody to adjust that as, as, as uh, uh, situations unfold. And so that, Many of those principles are the same in, in any kind of business. They just get applied differently in different ones. And one other point, the great leaders at the CEO level or, or the CFO level or the CMO level or the CHRO level in whatever organization or great professors, all of the great leaders in every field, at the core of that is very much the leadership uh, 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 aspects of public relations. In other words, they are first and foremost great communicators. They inspire, they motivate, they, they're not just passing along information. And, uh, and so I think that those principles, which are very important PR, are applied to any business. The approach, I mean, again, they get applied in different ways, but the approach is different. When, when, when we think about what makes a great client relationship leader in our business and an agency. It's, it, what I always try to uh, impart to our teams is, it's the same thing that we find valuable in a client. Uh, so in other words, inside that company, they're focused on the uh, understanding the business, they understand the, the, uh, the competitive set of that business, they, they understand, appreciate, and love the brands that they're dealing with, they're thinking strategically all the time, not just how do I respond to what's here, but, but how can I think about this in a different way? Uh, they're developing ideas creatively and then always, always, always executing flawlessly or aspiring to. Um, and so in, in each of these areas that applies, there are, some, there are some differences in the business model in each of these, but, uh, but the leadership principles are, I think, uh, constant. I think it, the number one, figure out who is doing that well and and find out why. In other words, if they've written books or they or there have been books about them. I think when I was first getting into this business, or really even be, it wasn't related to this business, but I've probably read a dozen or fifteen books on Abraham Lincoln because I thought of him as the as the uh, most effective leader in the, in in our country's history and. 
really early in my career, I spent a good deal of time reading biographies of great uh, people through history, which I think tells you what you know what they were what they found important. So first is that you know uh, figure out where the best practices are and what you can do to adapt those or, or, or um, adopt them. Second is uh, ask questions, be inquisitive. Everyone wants to be able to, even if they seem busy and they don't at first respond in maybe the way you thought they would. Uh, great professionals, great leaders want to be able to share the, this, you know, the, the qualities of leadership. So keep be persistent and figure out ways to do that. And sometimes it, you might be surprised. You go and approach uh, or write to a very um, uh, accomplished leader, and they'll take the time and and, um, and and respond. And then third, I think um, learn learn and be de dedicated, especially earlier in your career, to the fundamentals of the business. It's not in in, the, in your first few years. Don't be overly focused on what does this assignment mean to the rest of my career, or how do I get this title to be better today? Because what you do in those first few years is really setting up when the real leadership opportunities are going to come and when the when the real accomplishments are going to happen. When I was uh, starting out as a newspaper reporter, they assigned me as one. My first assignment was to be an obituary writer, and I thought that was going to be this dead end. I I really I went home and told my wife. I think maybe I better go find another field because they, they think all I can do is write obituaries. But instead I thought about how do I make myself the best darn obit writer this paper's ever had? And that was the goal I set for myself. And whether it's hubris or self-delusion or anything else, every step of the way in my career I've thought about what's the best way to do whatever this assignment is, how, do I, how, do, how can I be the best at that? And then I set out to do that. And, and there are a lot of implications in what that means to figure that out. But if you're focused on that, you're focused on the right things rather than, oh, it's just the best use of my time or how is, is, do I want to do this for the rest of my life? You're not going to, whatever you're doing right now in the first few years, you're probably not going to do that for the rest of your life. Don't sweat it. Focus on learning. Focus on writing. Focus on asking the right questions. The ability to write clearly and effectively uh, and um, and to, and again, all the aspects of effective communication, which is really more than ever about engagement, right? And it's about, it's about listening as well as uh, virtually listening or directly listening. Um, so number one, that the, the fundamentals of effective communications. Number two, I think things, some of the programs run by the Planck Center, by the, uh, the PRSSA, by the PRSA Foundation, and by a number of other organizations are highly effective if they existed in the way they do now, when I was a student, I didn't know it. Well, I didn't know I was going to be in PR, frankly. But I think there are a lot of effective organizations that one can either directly participate in and or um, virtually participate. And uh, by all means, jump into that. When we look at entry-level professionals, we're looking at somebody that's already, when you show up and we're essentially for one of our internships and you're a junior in college, we're expecting that you've already demonstrated some some commitment to this field, some um, some capability in that area, and it can be any. It can be doing something in a neighborhood organization, or it could be doing something at the school. But show that seriousness and think about that. that how that's going to help build those fundamental uh, capabilities and skills that you will then translate as experience develops and knowledge develops into into true leadership and true professionalism. Are there naturally great leaders? Of course, I and mean, there 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 are naturally great musicians, there are naturally great um, uh, people in every profession. But the ideals and principles and, and uh, elements of leadership are learnable and teachable. And, and frankly, it is our responsibility as professionals uh, and, and as students, it's our responsibility to be constantly uh, in, that, in that 360 process of learning and teaching. From my perch of, of more than uh, 30 years of working with so many different companies and, and with so many different uh, people throughout the PR profession, I can, I can absolutely assure you there are great leaders in this business. In many cases, people have just not had a chance to see it and maybe, maybe too many of us uh, allow the urgent to overtake the important, as someone once said, and, and we're, not, we're not spending the time to really demonstrate and define what that leadership is. Now, that said, uh, there are there are perhaps 
not, not enough uh, things being done to support exactly the kind of um, program that the Planck Center runs and a number of other organizations to couple uh, leaders in the business with students and with emerging professionals in a ways that, that can, can more deeply uh, uh, enable them to share ideas and to, and to um, teach some of the principles of leadership about having strong values, about um, the, the fundamentals of communications, about uh, the right kind of engagement with stakeholders and the right kind of listening. Uh, and so I think um, that would be the best step, but, um, but also for us to maybe do more to, to celebrate and recognize uh, where there are, are uh, um, great leaders in this business. I think a good place for starting on, on leadership uh, in, in any profession, I think uh, certainly in ours, is a book called True Professionalism by David Meister. Uh, and he has very good ideas about what the elements of great professionalism are, which are also, uh, uh, coincidentally, the, uh, many of the characteristics of great leaders. Uh, and I think he's got very helpful uh, um, practical advice in that book. Um, I think it came out in the late 90s. I think the best advice is, uh, first of all, focus on your writing skills and some of your other basic communication skills. Be a voracious reader, uh, especially of, of media writ large, all media, uh, traditional media, social media, uh, the various emerging uh, elements of media. Uh, and focus on where, uh, where your particular interests lie, because I think if you have a passion about what you're working on, that comes through in your work. It comes through in how, how you dive into it and, and, and in the effectiveness of your, uh, the skills you develop and the, um, and the expertise that you then demonstrate. We want most of all to see someone who has already demonstrated a serious commitment to this uh, profession. And that doesn't mean that you've had PR jobs because you're probably coming for an entry level job. Uh, but it means that you've done internships in college and, you've, and you're, you can show how those apply to challenges my organization might face or our clients might face. So you've done some research, first of all, on what those challenges might be. Uh, you're asking questions. You don't have to come in being an expert on everything. You should be asking questions and showing an inquisitive nature and some insightful uh, observations or questions that will let us then see how you'll apply that those skills and that and those um, tendencies toward the work you'll do with us, and most important, focus in the in that period in school, but also in your early professional years, in developing your core uh, communication skills, especially writing, but also active listening and trying to understand the greater world in which our clients are operating, because that's going to that's if they then use that to apply their skills, this will be a really uh, successful career. Thank you.